Hi, welcome, it's Grandma Roseanne. Uh, this is what we're making today. We're making blueberry lemon scones and we're doing it with whipped honey. Now, I think these look amazing. So if you want to do some traditional English scones that everybody in your family is gonna love, just stay with me, listen to the video and go make something delicious. Well, you saw the culinary delight that we're about to make. So blueberry lemon scones are in our immediate future. I thought that they would be difficult. No, they're quite simple. So let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to you in grams simply because baking is really precise. But if you don't have a little scale like this, which is very inexpensive, um, uh, I'm 10, $15 off of Amazon. Um, then I'm gonna give it to you in cups at the end. I will put it in the description, all right? But hopefully you'll have one of these. So in my sifter, I have 500 grams of flour. To that, a pinch of salt. Now, this is a lot. I was very surprised at this recipe. It's 300 grams of baking powder, which is a lot, you guys. First time I saw that, I thought, well, I'm not so sure about that, but I tried it and it worked. So as you know, if you're familiar with scones, they're sweet, so we have 80 grams of sugar. Now, I'm going to mix it all together. And this really is a step that you might want to do, even if you have just one of those sifters like that, you might want to do that simply because it just incorporates all of your ingredients beautifully and it fluffs up that flour. There aren't a lot of steps to making scones, but I think each step is pretty darn important. Now I have one stick of butter which was frozen, and this is important, okay? You do want to freeze that stick of butter, and then I just took a hand grater, grated it, and here we have it. This is one of the steps I told you was very, very important in scones, and you want that butter frozen. You want it very, very, very cold. I always keep at least two cubes of butter in my freezer, because when I decide I want to make something, I don't want to have to go uh, put in another hour or two of waiting for it to freeze. Now you'll see I'm not using my fingers yet. I'm trying to keep this as cold as possible and our fingers hold quite a bit of heat. So you want that well mixed. And here I have two mil of buttermilk and I'm putting in two eggs. This is a very rich batter. And the eggs and the milk have been kept in the refrigerator until I needed them. I want to give this a little bit of a stir. When I was in England, I learned to love scones. Oh, I think scones are far more important to the English than they are to us here in the United States. And I'm not quite sure why, but I think we always kind of go to a muffin before we go to a scone. But, oh boy, when you learn to make these, they are outrageous. Okay, now I'm just going to make a little well in here. I'm going to pour the egg and buttermilk mixture in. And once again, as long as I can, I will keep my hot fingers out of here. Now we're getting pretty close to our fruit addition. So use whatever you want. I love blueberries. I've tried to grow them here. We're in Southern California. I don't know, I just can't get them to grow here. But I buy them all the time. But if you're in regions where they grow, like my girlfriend has up in Washington when I go, or Port, yeah, Oregon, when I go up there, we go just pick them that grow wild. They're fantastic. So it says one cup, however, I like a lot. So I'm putting a cup and a handful in, and then I have the zest of one lemon and probably the half of one lemon uh, squeezed in. And then we wanna mix all of that in. And get this 
whole mess combined so we can roll it out. And isn't it nice that we don't have to use a mixer? <laughs> we have to clean a mixer or a food processor. And if you're thinking at this time, oh my gosh, that's never gonna come together. It will. You just have to be a little bit patient here. Those blueberries keep trying to escape. No, we want all of you in our mix. You don't want to overwork your dough. Over an inch. Here and create a thing of beauty and deliciousness. Now I have a cookie sheet here that I lined with parchment. I have, uh, this is just a little bit over an inch in diameter. This is important. I said every little step in scones is important. Don't twist it, just push it. And the reason for that is you want to help it on the rise. Yay. I'm, I'm, if you can't see it, I'm dipping it in a little bit of sugar just to make it easier to extract. These are big. Now we will rework our dough again very gently. I think it's kind of important to know that if you are uh, like maybe doing a, I don't know, maybe you're having some ladies over and you want to do some sort of a nice little tea something, um, cut them in all kinds of shapes. They can be rounds, hearts, triangles. It doesn't matter. The cooking time will be the same on all of them as long as the height, the depth of that dough is the same. Now, <clears throat> I have an egg wash here. I have just one yolk and just a little tiny bit of water, um, maybe even like an eighth of a teaspoon if I were to measure it, which I didn't, just to loosen it up. We're going to brush that on the top and the sides of our beautiful scones. This is going to give them a glossy look and a very shiny look. And we're also going to sprinkle sugar on them, so it's going to give it an extra bounce of sweetness. All very nice for our palate. And obviously you can make these much smaller. I kind of made them ginormous. Now I'm going to pop this back into the refrigerator for about 15 minutes, or if you have room in your freezer, which I do not, um, leave it in there for like maybe 10 minutes. We just want that butter to get really cold again because what happens when the butter is cold and you introduce it to an oven that is 390 degrees, it, it pops and just like that and it just makes it so much fluffier. Okay, our scones are chilled and now what I'm going to do is just top them with some sugar. It's going to help them glisten a little bit and obviously it's going to be delicious when you have this in your mouth. So now for the baking time. If you are doing smaller scones, not quite as ginormous as what I made, you can probably start checking them at like 12 to 13 minutes 
and I'm going to start checking mine at like 18 minutes. They may go to 20 or 22 because mine are really quite thick. So I shall return. But, oh, yes, but don't go away because we're going to do an addition to the scone that I'm going to show you in just one minute. So let me pop these in the oven. I'll be right back. Now, don't we all love beautiful honey? Oh, it is so good. It's so good for us. Oh. There. We are going to make whipped honey. And this is going to be added to our scones. It will be delicious. So all you want to do, ever so simple if you've never done this, just add it to your mixer. your whisk, and just let it go. Okay, it only whipped for just about maybe five minutes, but look, look at that. Oh, it changes completely. What a nice addition to our scones. And to maybe toast in the morning, I like peanut butter with a little bit of honey on it. This will be better. Yay! My grandkids are coming before too long. Oh yeah, my son and daughter-in-law too. <laughs> but you know it's all about the grandkids. I, I can't wait for them to try this. They're gonna love it. That's really good. Well, whoops, <laughs> I almost dropped the whole thing. Look at what we have now brought out of our oven. Oh, I'm gonna let them sit here for just a minute and then I'm going to move them over onto a cooling rack. What do you think? Oh, I think they look wonderful. All right, we're going to take a scone. I actually am going to cut this in half. And the reason I'm cutting it in half is that I really, really want to um, enjoy this honey, the whipped honey that we made. Oh, it looks so good. Delicious, delicious. All righty. I'm excited to eat this. That's the wonderful thing when you really enjoy cooking. It's whatever you feel like you want to eat. You can whip it up in no time at all. All right, bon appetit. Those blueberries are plump and sweet and juicy and just a little undertone of the lemon. These are exquisite and honestly, I love this. So enjoy, come back, subscribe, hit the like button, uh, hit the bell, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. You guys, these are good.